What is going on, YouTube? Welcome back to the channel. Lex Express checking in with my thoughts on Obi Wan Kenobi. This is the latest Star Wars story on Disney Plus, and it just wrapped up today. The finale debuted on June twenty second, twenty twenty two. So look, let me let me talk about the positives before I get into some of the things that irked me about the show, and we'll circle back and you know. You know how these things go. We're just going to relax here for a little bit. So grab yourself some water, something to drink, a little snack. It took me some hours to put my thoughts together and kind of like direct my feelings in a way where I could project it to you guys on video. And I'm at the end of the day, just thinking one thing in my head. Unnecessary. But before we touch base on that. Again, we're going to talk about the positives. So first things first, I absolutely love the way they portrayed Darth Vader. He was a menace. Every scene that he was in mattered. It wasn't just thrown in there for the sake of being thrown in there. It had purpose and it made everything feel whole again. It made the story get, you know, to the next level. It elevated everyone around as well. All right. So as a character, Darth Vader was handled perfectly. It couldn't have been done better. He was scary. He was menacing and all of the above. And then Obi-Wan Kenobi, on the other hand, it's a journey of him kind of finding himself again. Right. And, and every moment that he had, it, not that it, it, it mattered, but at the same time that it just got dragged. And it's not Ewan McGregor's fault. He's as good as he's ever been. The buildup towards the lightsaber, towards the battles, towards every mission that he had to accomplish here. It was all meaningful, right? Those moments were all meaningful. But he, there, there was a lot of stuff of him like going to work and a lot of uh, just a lot of fillers. And that comes with the territory of making a show. And then we got Reva here who... People bashed and talked crap about her and they were racist and super nasty towards her. I thought she did a phenomenal job. All right. Let me just put that out, out there. The third sister, Reva from the Inquisitors, was awesome. She was one of the highlights of the show. She didn't bother me. I thought the story they made for her was predictable, right? I, I, I felt like they were going to go in the direction they ended up going on with her. But it was fun to see either way. We hadn't really seen something like that. So Reva was done justice as a new, fresh character. Thought she was presented very in a very cool way. And the actress that played her did outstanding. So awesome job there. And then we have Ewan McGregor, you know, showing how he's getting to that new hope old ben kenobi right it, it really shows him transitioning throughout the show and not only uh you know kind of becoming a jedi again but being a wise one once more so i really enjoyed that element right i really really enjoyed that element but back to darth vader he's the one that sealed the deal ultimately if it wasn't for vader this show would have been forgetful and we wouldn't even be talking about it. Honestly, you can't have this show without Vader. And I'm glad that they did it the way they did it. But, but even though they got good kids to play Luke and Leia and, you know, everything was handled with care for the most part, I feel like there's been so many stories that have been far better in terms of having a protector and a child that needs protection. You know, I could go even and mention the Mandalorian, which has a similar plot. I feel like they just did the same exact story, but kind of in a different way. And they utilized, you know, the original trilogy as the core of Obi-Wan Kenobi. And not that that's a bad thing, but it's a story we just saw with Grogu and Mando. You know what I mean? But if you want to talk about stories that have better protectors and better better kids that need protection, you could talk about The Last of Us. You could talk about Leon the Professional. Um, there's just so many stories, man. Uh, Logan. I mean, this doesn't come close to any of those stories. You know, the 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 most interesting thing here was ultimately the stuff that they laid back on 
from the original trilogy. And I feel like it, it kind of made the show drag. So it puts me in a position where I feel almost uncomfortable to say that this show was unnecessary. It needed to be a movie. It had so many great moments and spots. And I even got a little teary eyed at times. I got goosebumps. I felt it. I was connected to the story they were telling, but I felt like it was just, you know, too much. And it was only six episodes. They didn't make every minute count. At least that's how I felt. And back to let's circle back to Reva real quick. That last episode where she was going for Luke Skywalker after already being left for dead, right? They left her for dead. They left her behind. She was free and clear. In my opinion, I thought that that was just a whole waste. That was a waste. That was like, I'm watching that whole sequence and I'm like, what are you doing? What? Like this needed to happen before, not now. Like, it felt like the, the it was just off sync with where they were at in that particular moment for the finale, that is. And and I don't want to, like, spoil too, too much. I did bring that up. But, you know, we have a nice cameo that was very heartfelt that we were kind of building up towards that moment. Really enjoyed that. I have a soft spot for the cameo they had there. That was a good moment for me. But, um, you know, having... Obi-Wan Kenobi flying around town, flying to Tatooine to say bye to this guy, flying to this other place to say bye to Leia and fly like he's flying everywhere just to say hello, uh, hello there. And, you know, drop the little one liners like I'm like, wow, they really had nothing for him. I like it. I, 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 I like it as a movie. If you're able to cut this show and turn it into a movie, it, it would have been spectacular. Because you're able to see how he got over the Anakin, uh, you know, transformation. You were able to see how he was, you know, coming into his own and, and, and bringing peace to himself after what happened with the whole Anakin Vader situation. It was him making peace. That's what the show's about, along with protecting Leia and Luke and things like that. So for me, it just felt like. It could have been epic as a movie, and I can't help but wonder what it would have been, right? And what it could have been. Because as a show, I think Mandalorian was better. And and Obi-Wan Kenobi is my favorite character in the Star Wars universe, might I add. So it was better than Boba Fett. I thought Boba Fett was only good when Mando came in and they did his whole story, which was just put there for the sake of being put there. Boba's that show was such a waste, in my opinion, at least. I know some people really enjoyed it, but I thought it was a waste. And, you know, this is coming from a person that's not really a big TV show guy, but I loved Mandalorian. Mandalorian turned me into a fan of the idea that we could make Star Wars stories into small TV shows, but um, small in terms of episodes, not because of the budget that they spent on it, but... Um, Mandalorian had its fair share of nagging issues. It, it, it had filler moments as well. But the overall arc and the meaning behind the story felt very significant. This story didn't really feel significant, even with all the stuff that they used from the prequels. So I'm, I'm kind of disappointed. Um, I'm looking at this show as something that I wanted to absolutely love and go crazy for. And I just don't feel like I'm like... Like, yeah, it happened, but we didn't really need it. And I'm not one to say that, too. Let me add this here, too. I'm not really one to say that. I typically like when things get recycled and we see our our old favorite characters come back with the same actors and, you know, like the whole vintage nostalgia stuff. I'm a sucker for that. And this show had me. There's moments in this show that I legit absolutely love that I'll give a 10 out of 10. The way that they orchestrated certain fight sequences were awesome. But I feel like this show, if anything, it created more plot holes for the franchise than it did anything else. The arc wasn't necessary. It needed to be a movie. It needed to be a movie. The last episode was a grand slam, though. They they executed the last episode for the most part really well, except for the Reva stuff. It was done really well. 
And and um, the the episode prior to that, episode five, was also fantastic. Um, but episode four, it was kind of iffy. Like the third episode was whatever. The first episode was good, so it's like episodes two, three, and four. I don't know. You could squeeze it into a two-hour movie. That's what I think, at least. What do you guys think about the show? Is Disney doing it right by making everything into a freaking show now, or do you miss the movies like I do? Let me know down below. I'll see y'all real soon. I'll probably do another discussion video down the road, but I just wanted to get my thoughts out. Uh, out. Look at me. I can't even speak right now because I'm just heartbroken. I'll see you on the next one, all right? Uh, 1 through 10. 1 through 10. Hold on. I almost forgot. 1 through 10. I got to give it like a 7 out of 10 or 8 out of 10, something like that. Because I think Boba Fett to me was like a 6 or a 5. This is probably like a 7 or 8. My expectations were really crazy, and that's my fault. That's my fault. So, yeah, I'll see you on the next one. I got to still digest the score, but, yeah, either a 7 or an 8 for me. I'll see you on the next one for sure. Peace.